Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. And King of Floors, your vinyl, laminate, and engineered flooring superstore. Presented by King of Floors and Able Auctions. It is Monday. All of our guests today on Monday are sponsored by Bassant Motors. It's May Days at Bassant. Choose from one of three great options this month, including $1,000 Visa gift cards. Check them out online at BassantMotors.com as we bring in our old friend, our young friend, BC Sports Hall of Famer, Hockey Hall of Famer. Good guy. Tony Gallagher. Great guy. Tony, Gentlemen, thanks. how are you? Good. How are you, <laughs> sir? So Thank great you. to hear that you've landed on your feet and you're up and running and having some fun. Yeah. We're just uh, thankful to uh, still be uh, kicking in the business, uh, Tony, uh, the way things are yeah, going these days. Yeah, it's getting increasingly difficult, is it, it not? It, Man, it, it I, uh, really is. I had no idea how easy I had it. I'm just beginning to figure that out. Yeah. But I'm a slow learner anyway. <laughs> well, that makes two of us. Well, three of us. I, um, and by the way, thanks for joining us for a second straight Monday. You, of course, were on the show uh, last week, uh, courtesy of Barry McDonald. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you saw that, Tony. I did not. No, oh. good old there, BMAC. Why? What did he do? Did he? Uh, did he abuse me? <laughs> no, he opened up the interview though by doing you. It was. Uh, <laughs> oh, he, he went oh, on and on about Sammy Paulson. Was... <laughs> ah, yeah. What a what a friend uh, BMAC is. How is he? By the way, I know we're catching up here on. Oh on no, Mary. that's fine. That's fine. You know what? We got so much response on the interview from BMAC. I don't mind uh, doing this at all. Um, well, that's he, great. I mean, let's. I mean, BMAC back on air is such spe- spectacular oh. news. Man, oh man, I I've been living in a cave, so uh, I haven't quite figured out where all these people are that left TSN. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. it's just. They're scrambling around, and uh, everybody seems to be going, though, so yeah. it's great. No. But how's BMAC? No. He's going well. Well, uh, you know what, Tony? You just said something there. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you how he's doing. He, he did He did the interview last week. That's the yeah, best that's The right. best sign uh, of all. Oh, yeah. And uh, his struggles with uh, depression, he's got Parkinson's as well. He talked about it um, uh, last week. Uh, well documented, but the fact he did that interview, and Barry and I talked afterwards, <clears throat> Uh, that's a great sign. That's a that's a real positive sign for him. Barry McDonald is one of the greatest figures I've ever met in my life, man. All I time, say that all openly. time. Yeah. Uh, all I mean, I've just never seen him treat anybody, anybody other than the most wonderful person in the world, mm. and that's really something to say. I mean, how many times I've fallen off that horse? I can't imagine, but. Barry never falls off. Yeah, yeah. I, f- I fell off that horse uh, just moments ago before, before the show, <laughs> as, as Ryan will tell you. Hey, uh, Tony, do you understand why the Canucks would be interested in somebody like uh, Jeff Cortnell? Well, I, I could understand why they might uh, seek his uh, counsel, because they've done that before. Mm-hmm. They obviously did it in 2008 when they sought out my counsel at that point, too. Um, on on the Mike Gillis hiring, and we both suggested Mike was a very good idea. And, of course, Mike Gillis is probably the most successful GM they've had. I mean, they made a mountain of money in the owners when they hired him. And why they fired him when they did was really extraordinary, especially hiring the people that they did following him was even more extraordinary. Uh, and it's been a tale of woe ever since. And... Um, you know, so, and I, I certainly was not consulted on anything after 2008, which is uh, fine, and certainly I would not be one to consult now. But um, uh, it was, uh, it was a good run there with Mike. I think they, you know, they must have. I have no idea how much money they made, but it was just a mountain, and it's been pretty dry ever since. And. Uh, it's it's a right proper mess as they would say right now as everybody knows mm-hmm. this is uh, I think this may be the lowest the franchise has ever been I can't recall a time like this I mean it's embarrassing from a league point of view from a from a club point of view 
I mean, even just to be a player on the team must be kind of make you cower a little bit. I mean, it's just been a fiasco. It was a bad idea to play the season. Mm. The hockey has been so politely dismal. You can see it coming alive in the playoffs where fans are being allowed in the building, you know, of Florida. And, you know, obviously I think there were, you know, real people in the Vegas, Minnesota games yesterday, and they were so much more lively. The, the players kind of woke up almost. Granted, it was the playoffs, but what we've been watching is just nothing short of extraordinary. It's um, it's like a practice. It's like being allowed into the rink for a practice, mm-hmm. and um, that's what the fans have been watching. And I think it's going to have a very detrimental on, effect on people because who is going to want to go back and renew their season tickets uh, when they're finally allowed, if in fact they're finally allowed the way the health department is milking these um, these regulations um, that I mean I just don't know I, I it'll be interesting to see how they recover financially Tony I, I'm going to get to uh, Jeff Cortnell uh, in, in a second but I you said something interesting um, and Patrick Johnson said it in the paper yesterday calling the Canucks a dysfunctional and toxic and you just said it's one of the worst times uh, in the history of this franchise when you talk to people around the league and I know you still do uh, and you know we, we we talk to people as well. I have to agree with Patrick. They're, the feeling in the feeling around the league right now, Tony, is they're one of the worst run franchises right now in the NHL. Well, they certainly appear to be. And you know, from what I hear, I don't hear what I used to. I mean, I would be kind of all over it were I still working, just like you were, Rick. I mean, and I suppose you're still working away at it. But from what I'm hearing, and this is, uh, you know, just kind of the gossip is that um, there's quite a scramble for assets within the Aquilini empire. And uh, I guess I presume that's amongst the three brothers. And um, that's, I think, been distracting for uh, some people at the top. Uh, I would imagine it is for Francesco. And I mean, I, you know, I have no, uh, I can't, uh, validate that i can't say that that's absolutely the truth but that's what i've been hearing and those rumors are out there um and what that means to the franchise i can't imagine other than a bit of distraction at the top and that's not a situation you really want you want everybody in your organization focused on the success of the team and uh, so if you know it is it it's possible that uh, some of the difficulty may be coming from above when you look at Jeff Cortnell, you see the great hockey mind, but you also see a, a person that does, has done well in business. How could he help these guys tony yeah he's done well uh there's no question i I don't know he would um I can't imagine a role for Jeff really you know he hasn't been close to the game other than in an advisory capacity which he's probably doing for free now so i don't imagine they'd want to pay for it unless it was a liaison officer between the team and ownership and and one to get each side focused saying look uh, you got to decide what you're going to do here uh to each each party and not let things fester to make things don't fester and make make sure decisions are made in a timely manner but uh, that's about where i could see him fitting in but you know how whether they ever wanted to do that or not i'm not sure i mean jeff was uh you know he was consulted in in 08 and uh, you know we were we were both involved uh with mike um being hired and I think that was a very, very smart hire on the part of the family. Uh, and Mike did a, a great job. I don't think there's any way to deny that. Things didn't go uh, very well at the end, but then they were drafting in positions 28, 29, and 30, uh, almost his entire run there, other than uh, the first one. And, um, you know, they you don't get the same kind of player and uh, especially uh, and Mike has admitted he made he was too slow to change some of the scouting department and shake it up he didn't want to go in there and just fire people nobody does 
Um, but you know, it was a situ- it was a a job that had to be done, and uh, he was you know he was inexperienced as a general manager at the time, and didn't realize he had to go in and do the unpleasant duty of rolling some heads. But um, you know, obviously, he figured that out um, the hard way. So uh, you know, that was pretty successful. So. Jeff's advice has been good, and I, I don't think he, you know, I don't think they followed his advice when they hired Trevor Linden. In fact, the Trevor Linden hiring was really a shocker to most everyone who knew the family because um, they had not been stated fans of Trevor Linden prior to that. Um, and uh, so that caught everyone off guard uh, who, who, was, uh, you know, somewhat familiar with the Aquilini desires. So, uh, you know, it's um, it's a strange world out there, and people do strange things when they're under pressure. And uh, that was one hire that I think um, was made under pressure. And, you know, they subsequently changed that for whatever reason, whether that was the right move or not. I don't know, because I began to lose contact a little bit with the with the franchise after that I wasn't working and not working so hard but it's been fun to observe but right now it's it's really sad to watch I mean playing these games in the afternoon and uh, just trying to quietly grind out the season in absurd (laughs) meaningless games uh, being kept uh, you know they might as well play them in a in a darkened rink I mean it's just it's so bizarre. It's off the charts. Okay, Tony, uh, very quickly, before we go, you mentioned Mike Gillis. Uh, is, a to is a return to Vancouver, is a return to the Canucks a possibility f- for Mike Gillis? We talked about it last week. I think it's highly unlikely, um, highly unlikely for lots of reasons. But uh, I wouldn't say it's un- impossible, but... Um, Things would have to change considerably, and uh, now nah, I, I, I think the chances of that'd be about a one percent, two percent chance, uh, pretty low. But I wouldn't say impossible, but not likely. He does want back in the NHL, does he not? I don't know. At this point, uh, you'd have to re-ask him again. It's been a while, yep. and uh, you know, I know Mike's enjoying life and got lots of things going on. I mean, he. He does not need hockey, believe me. He's a, a pretty varied guy. He's not one of these career hockey guys that absolutely needs to be involved. Uh, I think he can take it or leave it, and that's why he hasn't been back in before. He's had opportunities, but the situation has to be right for him. He's very particular. Having done it once, he knows the dysfunctions uh, which go on in organizations, and he simply does not want to be part of an organization like that. And he's going to be picky. So, you know, at this point, I don't even know what his answer would be as to whether he wants back or not. Tony, this has been great. We'll get either you or BMAC on again uh, soon. Uh, or, toge- yeah, or together. Well, together, yeah. Changeable from what go. I understand. <laughs> we'll get there you on go. together. Great to hear you. <laughs> Great to hear That'd you, Tony. Fun. Hey, anytime I'll go on with Barry on uh, on Bombay Radio. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that might be our next stop. Who knows? <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't think the city exists anymore. They call no, it something true. else, yeah. don't they? Mumbai, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. Tony, okay. th- thanks for this. Okay, Pretty- then, guys. <laughs> Bye-bye. Uh, Tony Gallagher.